It's Professor Dave. Let's find the area between curves. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. By now, we have a solid conceptual understanding of integration and are able to integrate a wide variety of functions. So it's time to start applying integration to different kinds of problems in order to solve them. Let's dive into these applications now. To set ourselves up for the first type of problem we are going to examine, take a look at this figure. It's a square with a circular hole in it. If we wanted to find the area of this figure, how would we do it? Well, if we knew all of these parameters, it would be quite simple. We could just find the area of the circle and subtract it from the area of the square, because the circular area is being taken away from the square's area. By that analogy, take a look at this. Here are two continuous functions, f of x and g of x, operating over the same interval. How would we find the area in between these two curves? Well, if we learned anything from our little square donut, we can use exactly the same approach. We can find the area in between f and the x-axis by integrating f of x. We can find the area between g and the x-axis by integrating g of x. So if we only want to know about this section between these two curves, then we should be able to subtract the integral of g of x from the integral of f of x. That would be subtracting the smaller area from the total area, just like we subtracted the circle from the square. This is a powerful concept because prior to this, we had been exclusively calculating the area between a curve and the x-axis. But simply by subtracting two integrals, we can now find the area between any two functions anywhere on the coordinate plane. Let's try an example. Here are two functions, the first being the parabola x squared plus 1, and the other being the line y equals x. Let's find the area in between these curves over the interval from 0 to 1. Rather intuitively, that will be the integral of x squared plus 1 from 0 to 1, minus the integral of x from 0 to 1. Again, that's like taking all of this area and subtracting from it this smaller area, which leaves us with the area in between the curves. Now, we know that the difference of two integrals over the same interval is the same as the integral of the difference of the two functions. So really, we can even just turn this into one integral. Then we just end up with the integral of x squared plus 1 minus x, or rearranged, x squared minus x plus 1. This may seem incredible, as it's now an entirely new function, but integrating this will indeed give us our answer. So let's get the antiderivative, which will be x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus x. We evaluate that at 1, and we get 1 third minus 1 half plus 1. Changing everything to the common denominator of 6 and then combining everything into one fraction, 2 minus 3 plus 6 is 5, so that will be 5 sixths. And since evaluating at the lower limit gives us 0, this will be our answer. So as you can see, this application does not require that we learn anything significantly new, as we are just integrating functions as we have been doing. However, we will sometimes have to use a little bit of critical thinking. What if we are simply given two functions, y equals x squared and y equals 2x minus x squared, and we want to find the area of the region enclosed by the two functions? First things first, let's graph them so that we can see what we are dealing with. We know what x squared looks like, and this other one is also a parabola. We could either use a graphing calculator or just convert this into vertex form by completing the square. If you need a refresher on how to do this, visit my tutorial on this topic earlier in the series. Otherwise, a little bit of rearranging would give us this. So it looks like x squared, but with its center at 1, 1 and opening up downwards. So in looking for the area of the region enclosed by these functions, we are certainly implying this section right here. So we have the two functions that we need to integrate, but what are the limits of integration? Well, those will be the x values at the points where the functions intersect. So what are those values? We can probably tell from this graph 
But just to make sure, let's set the functions equal to each other and solve, since these points must be solutions for both functions. A little bit of algebra will give us the origin and 1, 1 as the intersections, just as we might expect. So let's set up our integral, making sure to write 2x minus x squared first, and then subtract x squared from that, as we are subtracting the function that makes up the lower edge from the function that makes up the upper edge. This will give us 2x minus 2x squared. Integrating this, we therefore get 2x squared over 2, or simply x squared, minus 2x cubed over 3. Evaluating this expression for x equals 1 will give us 1 minus 2 thirds, which is 1 third, and evaluating at 0 gives us 0. So 1 third is our final answer. So this is the basic idea behind this technique. The functions can get a little trickier, and we may need to use the substitution method or some other technique to evaluate the integral. But that won't change our approach at all. We are still just subtracting two functions and integrating. One other thing we may see is a situation where we have functions in terms of y instead. And in such a situation, we will just be doing everything in terms of the y-axis, meaning that we are gauging how far functions are from the y-axis instead of the x-axis. This also means that we will integrate with respect to y rather than x, so y terms are in the function, and the integrand ends with dy. But other than this small difference, the approach is absolutely identical. To get a little more practice, let's check comprehension. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.